a show that tackles the big issues affecting the BVI and the rest of the Caribbean. Searches for answers to today's big questions and gives viewers a unique perspective on developing stories. Follow the big story with me, Kathy Richards, only on JTV. This show is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands, Cyril B. Romney Tertola Pier Park, Envy Salon Spa Nail and Barbershop, the Wellness Center, Medical and Behavioral Health Clinics, Tissily Cross Deliciously Smooth Cider, HOV Medical and Digicel. Sign up for Digicel Plus Home Light Bundles, faster internet movies and sports. Grenada, Puerto Rico and Jamaica are on island, ready for the Brigado Flax and Claudio Cricky Educational Center's College Affair, slated for May 11, 2023. In this Big Story interview with the representatives of the three universities, hear what's in the pot for the Virgin Islands. Colin Dow, Associate Dean of Admissions at St. George's University, Grenada. Oh, hi, Spice. That's us. Elvira Febres Cruz from Puerto Rico Inter-American University. Thank you. Paulette Williams, Director of International Relations and Marketing, College of Agriculture, Science and Education, CASE in Jamaica. Oh. Delford Morgan, Dean of the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, CASE in Jamaica. Awesome. And now that we've all formally introduced ourselves, tell us the nature of your visit here today. Uh, well, I'm here as a representative of the faculty and case by extension to promote our programs and to promote diversity in our institution with respect to recruiting students from all over the Caribbean to highlight the need for greater science and technology in agriculture and to more or less increase the thrust towards food security in the region. So in addition to all that, we want to ensure that the students of the BVI know that there are other live options apart from the ones that they have traditionally been accustomed to and that case is one of these and we are maybe not as well known in the bvi but better known elsewhere because our flagship program is agriculture many people think of us first they think of agriculture but we want to ensure that they understand that we are as big on science and education as we are on agriculture. Studying in um, Inter-American University will be a great experience for you. Uh, we have many programs to offer like nursing, psychology, business administration. We have a school of aviation and we are hope to see you all tomorrow. Uh, it is an opportunity for us at St. George's University, one, to share of our programs, flagship program being medicine, veterinary medicine, marine biology would be the ones that we will promote most strongly. Uh, in addition to that, building upon the relationship we already have with students at BVI and to emphasize the scholarship programs that we have geared towards Caribbean students in particular and strong academic performers in general. So it is really an opportunity for us to partner um, with the people of the BVI to ensure access to quality education. Tell us a little bit more about some of those scholarships that you alluded to. Um, we have an automatic waiver of 65% off of our published tuition for all resident Caribbean students undertaking undergraduate education at St. George's University. Uh, in addition, we have what is referred to as a Caribbean Visionary Scholarship, where top performers can compete for one of three full tuition scholarships to any undergraduate program annually. Um, when one is promoted, if they're taking on the four-year Doctor of Medicine or Doctor of Veterinary Medicine programs, we likewise have uh, bursaries and scholarships that can significantly reduce the tuition. But in addition to that, if there is a financing gap, we offer institutional loans. It's, it's about providing the access to the students. Um, we have been available in providing quality medical education has been available at St. George's University since 1977. This thrust is to ensure it is accessible to your students. Okay, so uh, in the past, uh, has the BVI been accessing that, that medical um, scholarship? Oh yes, we, we, we have um, circa six students 
from the BVI currently with us, um, both in the medical program along with other programs. So yes, not coming in sufficient numbers, of course. Um, so we'd always like more, and those who are on campus would like more company from the BVI. But we do have a number of students who are with us uh, in the medical program and others. Okay, permit me to stay on him for just a little bit longer. I'll get to you okay. uh, shortly as well. Uh, there is that, that great need for uh, medical professionals in the Caribbean. Uh, we've been experiencing that brain drain mm -hmm. to the United States, to the UK, and to the wider world because of the attraction of the salary. How do we work together to keep our people here so that we can have the best health care according to our uh, specialists? Well, the reality is that we deserve the best health care and we do have some of the best minds in the world. And one of the reasons for the visit is to work towards establishing a relationship with government so that students can come in on scholarships partnering with the government of the BVI, um, which will translate into students being bonded. And the university has a strong history of collaborating with governments, um, government of Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, Botswana, Ghana, among others, to ensuring that their graduates return to serve the various populations. So this is something that we are very interested in recognizing that we it doesn't make sense that we are contributing to the brain drain of the Caribbean. We want to enhance healthcare in general, um, whether it's human health through the Doctor of Medicine program, animal health through a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine program, or a Master of Public Health program, recognizing that we're just emerging from the COVID pandemic and the dire need um, for us to embrace public health, professional public health, and all that it can translate into for the betterment of our societies. Okay, so that initiative of trying to work with government is a new one. It is a renewed one. Um, conversation started just prior to COVID and then there was COVID. So this is my first visit post, I'm saying post COVID notice, mm -hmm. um, post COVID uh, to the BVI. And hopefully we can have this type of relationship where um, students can get access to funding through government, along with the university scholarships, of course, um, that would allow them not just to be trained with us, utilizing all of the facilities that we have, Grenada, US, UK, but return home to serve the population. Awesome. So let me go to the Jamaicans now for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you spoke a little bit mm -hmm. there about agriculture. And whenever you say that, mm -hmm. it's something that raises an ant's nest here in the Virgin Islands, because we are seeing more and more the need to grow our own food and to be self-sufficient in so many ways. So tell us how you being involved in this way by providing uh, opportunities to greater education can contribute towards that. Okay, thank you for asking that because food security is at the top of all our priority lists, I'm sure. Our food bill, or food import bill is way too high. And we've been talking about eat what you grow and grow what you eat. That's a new mantra in Jamaica, which is not quite new. It's coming from the 70s. And, you know, we're renewing that. So one of the things we're seeing, especially when we talk to the, the folks in the schools, we've, the colleges we've, we've visited, we are seeing that the little that you have, you're already doing so much with in the schools. There's one school we visited, uh, Mr. Hodges School. Which one is that again? Elmer Elmer Star. Star High School. Right, yeah. that school. And they, they have a decent program going on. And we're saying to uh, them that if we were to get even three BVI students into case in Jamaica, when we're through with them, whether it's a general agriculture program or one of the uh, specialist programs that uh, Dean Morgan has in his faculty, they could come back here and make a tremendous transformative difference. So that is one level at which we can do it because uh, take for instance, we, we, have, we produce lots of fruits and when fruits are in season, they go to waste sometimes because they fall off and nothing is done with them. We take them our students at case understand the connection between the, the growing of the food and the processing, you know, the value added down the chain, we take it all the way through. So our students are learning how to make condensed milk, how to make ketchup, how to make uh, 
ice cream. How yeah. we're doing all, how to how to how to use the cassava to make flour. So we're doing all of that. So I'm seeing that if we were to get a couple of your guys in our system, we would transform them, and then when we send them back to you they will transform not just the agricultural sector, but the manufacturing as well. Mm. OK, so to, to add to Paulette's point as well, the emerging technologies that are required to maximize production um, in your environment, particularly where there's not much land and there's difficulty with soil, there's emerging technologies that we are able to produce without soil. So aquaponics and hydroponics and aeroponics are technologies that our students are exposed to. The automation of these systems require skill sets in computing or physics, which is something that students are more or less attracted to. Mm -hmm. um, also the use of drone technology in the application of fertilizers, pesticides, and also in the water selection of best sites to plant specific crops. So again, these are all programs in which students can be trained to maximize output from very little with very minimal input. And we are excited to be here because, as we said, the, the potential that we see is very great. And the potential is not just from our perspective where we see students coming to us, but also that the impact they can have when they return here. Because having discussions with persons about the, the local um, agriculture scene, as well as how you produce, as opposed to how much you import. I mean, there is a grow, there is a demand and a, and, a, and a market that exists for locally produced foods. It's just that you need to have the interest as well as the, the training. Case trains all the agriculture edit, agricultural teachers in Jamaica, and also the extension officers. So having discussions earlier, we recognize also the need to have programs that are geared towards developing our increase in the competence of persons who are already in the sector. So if you have extension officers who are here, they can also be trained in Jamaica in specific areas, whether it be in, in animal production or in plant different specific, whether it be protected agriculture or, or in the field. Mm -hmm. And again, also the use of drones as well. We have a program where we are training drone pilots to pretty much integrate the use of the drone technology in the agricultural space. So what's beautiful about what you just said there is, is the fact that when we were growing up and we were doing agriculture in school, we know about using the machete and the cutlass. Right. And we, we, we have corns from here to here and our face of black and um, the other color and all of that. There was no technology right. as per se uh, back then. Now we're in a different age. We had the, the dial phones back then. Now we have cell phones, cell phones. and that's what the, the generation of today is adapted to, to technology. Now it's into the field of agriculture, how you can still pull their interest. Right. You don't have to do like we used to do right. back then. This exactly. Is your age. And the idea is, as I said earlier in a presentation, agriculture is now a sexy occupation because it actually, nice it yes, it is. <laughs> we're, we're bringing the sexy to agriculture because we're talking about integrating technology from sensors, computation, drones, GIS, um, aquaponics. All of these things are pretty much the cutting edge as far as how we maximize production with minimal input. So you had a conversation with students? Not yet, not, not yet. Base, basically administrative yes. staff? Yes, yes. Okay, and what's the interest level like? I would, say, I would say very encouraging. That, that's a good way to put it. I've, I've, our, discussion with the, our discussion with the Ministry of Education was very promising. I came away from that feeling very hopeful, but you know, there's always where, the, you know, the will to do and, you know, putting, we say it takes cash to care. So we want to see, we want to see the, the, the scholarships coming from the, the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Education to, to support this thrust. And we also want to, we're hoping that we will have some memorandum of understanding even coming out of this. I would really want to see some of your educators come to us so we can have some student exchanges and some faculty exchanges, I think those would also make a world of difference. Okay, and I guess you'll meet a great uh, Jamaican population here as well. <laughs> uh, and to you, my dear, uh, the BVI is a melting pot of, of different peoples. Uh, uh, you, Puerto Rico, the Spanish speaking population. Uh, where do you see your country fitting in with 
that of the BBI in this area? Uh, the Inter-American University is the only university in Puerto Rico that it's willing to have students from the B uh, BBI island because it's the only university that speak English programs. And helping the rest of the universities, we could prepare you as an entrepreneurs with the programs of business administrations. We were willing to make sure that the mental health of the island is perfect. That's why we offer the, uh, the program of psychology and to help uh, the students that are willing to learn how to fly, we have the program of aviation. Okay, but you being the only uh, Spanish-speaking person, yes. Today, tell them in Spanish for me. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to the Spanish population to get them to come to apply for your university. Pues a todas las personas que están viviendo en las Islas Vírgenes, estamos más, le vamos a dar el más caluroso bienvenida en la Interamericana. Tenemos muchos programas para ustedes adicionales a los que acabo de mencionar, ya que ustedes sí hablan español. Tengo el programa de trabajo social, tengo el programa de justicia criminal, tengo el programa de música popular para que vengan a encender y a avivar esos corazones de todas estas bellas personas en la isla. O sea que los esperamos mañana que puedan venir a la feria y tenemos mucho para ofrecerle a ustedes. Lo único que necesitamos es las ganas de que ustedes quieran estudiar y nosotros estamos allí para apoyarlo. Awesome. So I will not take too much more of your time. This was awesome to get to meet you guys, hear what you have to offer. But because we, we are family in the Caribbean, I'm all the way from Guyana. And I'm here working. Yeah. But you have a lot of your people here as well. My brother is married to a Grenadian. Ah. <laughs> so we make so I would give you this opportunity to each say something to the people that you have here <laughs> from your homeland. Say a greeting. Well, to the Grenadians in, in the BVI, um, warm spice isle greetings to you. Um, and I, while I will enjoy my time here, I certainly will look forward to welcome you at home. We do have a lot of breadfruit in season, so oil dung it will be. <laughs> I hope that one day I saw you in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is a great island. It's not as little as you, but we have many things to offer and we hope to see you there. Okay, so to the Jamaicans, what did I say? Right. Yo, um, <laughs> Yadi, make sure to come out, right? Come out to the, 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 the fair. I want someone to come back home, come go to school too, all right? <laughs> See you. Yo, big up on yourself. Big up on yourself. Uh, I'm going to see no food on the road. I want some food. What the food there? I want some scotch bonnet, some jerk. What the jerk there? Some party. No jerk, no party. Come, we want soon upon the road. Bring out the food, bring out the, bring out the vibes, bring out the fun. All right, that was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for your time. We know that where you choose to bank matters, and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official bank of paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions, which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. 
but with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life. We will live well. Hi, I'm Cowboy, and I'm running for stake pre no, no, presidents of stake. Thank you. And I will meet your needs. Some bathrooms are so expensive to build, they come with security. But at Staycation Butchers, our meats are affordable. People always ask me, Cowboy, where does your salmon come from? Well, our salmon comes from the water. How about the Cowboy? It's about for quality, integrity, and consistency. So come into Staycation Butchers and cast your vote for me, your next president of steak. Alexandra Durant approves this message. No, I don't.